Okay, welcoming wildlife. <clears throat> so here we have a backyard. Backyards, schoolyards, parks and gardens are places where people and wildlife meet. Lots, lots of people are discovering ways to make these places even more inviting for wild creatures of all kinds. Look around your own community. You might see some of these wildlife friendly ideas catching on. Beautiful yard. Somebody um, did a lot of uh, work right here. Look at all that planting stuff. <coughs> it's to welcome the, the plants. They're doing all kinds of plants to welcome all kinds of creatures that will take up that area. People are really welcoming things like that. And then here is a bird in a, looks like a kind of a, a little shed or something. And then there's a sunflower with a butterfly and right there with a bird and a mouse. <coughs> so, In many areas, bluebirds like this one have lost their homes, so, so have many other birds, including woodpeckers, nuthatches, and chickadees. That's because the tree holes they normally nest in disappear as dead trees are cut down, or because more aggressive species like house sparrows and starlings drive them away. Many people are helping out by putting up nesting boxes. Ah, there's a nesting box. Okay, up here. Um, <clears throat> gardeners are choosing flowers that suit the taste of birds and butterflies. This tall sunflower, for instance, offers nectar to a monarch butterfly as it blooms. After the petals fall off and the seeds mature, it becomes a homegrown feeder for nut thatches and a lot of other birds. A shallow container can placed right on the ground makes a great watering hole for squirrels and other small mammals too. Okay, that's a squirrel. <laughs> and then the last page. Oh, there. Hold on. Okay, the last page. Whether your backyard is a big city park, a small country garden, or a grassy lot outside your school, it's your part of the natural world. It's yours to explore and it's close to home. Your background, your backyard is quite a place. You know, one time when we were, um, I had kindergartners and we were coming back from, from our run, we used to have a 10 minute run. After that, we were coming back right at the, <clears throat> you know, as soon as you enter close to the school, there was this long string of, um, of web, just one long one going down, spider web. And we saw many, many tiny, tiny um, spiders. That was so neat to see. We all walked around it and said, Wow, look at all the tiny spiders. They were really tiny. They were so, the kids called them cute. And they kept saying, wow, they've never seen anything like that. I never saw anything like that. So there are things that come around. Look at, um, there's a song sparrow nest right here. A song sparrow nest in blackberry bush. And... Do you see eggs in that? Looks like it, huh? Yep. So this was your book for science. It's called Life in Your Backyard. Okay? Life in Your Backyard. And look at all the things that you saw in this. Going back to it, we had at the beginning of the page, <coughs> we had a a bird on top of a, a, a pole or something. And then right here, remember these creatures right here? Little tiny, some 
There's the worm being eaten by a robin. And there's a turtle under all those pretty flowers. And this boy is looking around in his backyard, finding out a lot of things. <coughs> Remember this part too? All these little creatures and their names. I know bed bugs. I know, a, uh, yeah, that one's also a bed bug. And this one's called a leaf hopper. And there's the praying mantis. There's the bee. And the plants that they can get their um, things from. The nectar. And as we continue on, there are some birds there. More birds. Wow, birds are pretty. Okay, more birds. A lot of birds. Wow. <coughs> All these beautiful birds. If you're a bird watcher like um, some people that I know especially my husband love looking at birds he even buys bird seeds so that they can come to the yard but there's a squirrel there a gray squirrel and there's a raccoon and uh, there's a crow lots of crows around too and my husband and I used to call each other you know what that is? It's a ground squirrel. <laughs> we used to call each other that because we love being out in the woods and just exploring, looking for, especially looking for things for me to make a cradle board. And then we'd see squirrels here and there on the ground here and there. So since we were seeing that a lot, we gave them the name Nietzsche, and then we call each other that. <laughs> that was fun walking around and just watching out for things. And then there are the tracks. Yeah, you're so from the tracks, you will know what kind of animal has been in your yard if there's snow on the ground <laughs> or muddy. And then there are some things that are left behind by them. Okay, on the leaf. And remember, this one is a, is, is a burrow, this thing right here is a burrow, burrow, okay, and this was where we were a while ago, welcoming them, making them feel at home, doing other things to, to catch their attention, and they can come over, it's a welcoming thing to, to have them in your yard where you have stuff, okay, and there's the boy again, looking around, and the song sparrow with their eggs, or the nest, the nest with eggs in it. <clears throat> so that was that, and I do have questions for that. <clears throat> so here's, here are some science questions. Okay, here. Questions for life in your backyard. Number one, what animals live in your backyard? Name five of them. Not the pets, though, okay? Not your pet kitten or your pet dog, but some other animal. Do you see any in your backyard? What does a worm eat? What plant has pollen for bees? Do schoolyards also have wildlife? What place can also get wildlife? Which animal is your favorite? And which plant is your favorite? So there are your questions for science. I don't know how to tell you to do it or just kind of text me or send me a YouTube message, okay? So we'll be learning together. Pretty soon I might learn more. I'm learning over here. <laughs> teaching on online.
Thank you for listening today. This has been your science lesson from Mrs. Lewis. Again, I know it's a